can you hear me now? Oh yeah, loud and clear. Okay, good. Yeah, I have the uh, computer uh, microphone strapped to my uh, shirt now, so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this works. <laughs> great, great. Okay, so I already introduced you, Michael. We we know you you created the uh, Applied Ion uh, Systems uh, quite recently, and and to support your your research on uh, on thrusters, but also uh, you I know you're on some uh, you have some missions using your thrusters already. So uh, it would be great to hear about the progress and developments uh, in open source proportion in in that sense. So uh, with no further ado, Michael, the screen is yours, and uh, take it away. All right, thank, thank you very much, Fred. Um, yeah, so my name is Michael Bredy. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm the founder of Applied Ion Systems, and uh, today I'll just be sharing some progress and developments in open source electric propulsion through my work at Applied Ion Systems. Um, so jumping right into it, um, at last year's uh, open source CubeShot work, open source CubeShot workshop, workshop I, um, presented some of my first systems that I started working on last year. So it was the GPPT-3 um, pulse plasma thruster. Um, that thruster was slated to be integrated with the um, AMSAT Spain Genesis N and LPOC cubes. Uh, so since that presentation last year, they have been successfully integrated into the just pocket cubes. Um, they've passed TVAC and vibration testing, and they are currently loaded on the uh, PicoBus deployer, uh, waiting for launch, hopefully, in this December, they were supposed to launch last December, um, but there's been a bunch of delays. So hopefully we'll actually have um, finally some of the first, as far as I'm aware, open source uh, thrusters uh, firing in orbit and we'll have some data for that. Um, so the uh, moving forward from that development, uh, this is one of the thrusters I worked on this year. Um, this is the EPPT-1 micro pulse plasma thr thruster. So like its predecessor here, you can see all of um, the electronics in the thruster are on one single board. Uh, this is slightly larger than the GPPT-3. It's about 45 millimeters squared um, by 28 millimeters um, deep. So still very compact, aimed for pocket cube class systems, but also able to be integrated very easily into a CubeSat system as well. Um, so some differences and improvements for this design was uh, spring-fed fuel as opposed, as opposed to just the Teflon bore that was used in the prior system. A uh, more efficient power supply, a more robust capacitor, which was the main limiting factor of the last system, uh, using dual ignition transformers and an improved thyristor. This uh, thruster also utilizes 3D printed housing, so I experimented with um, Ultem um, 3D printed material. Uh, which allows a lot of built-in modularity. So it allows me to house all the electronic, uh, the, the electrodes, the connections internally, um, and the fuel itself, and allows it to be expanded for, for higher housing, uh, for more fuel capacity. Um, so the goal of this thruster was ultimately longer lifetime, uh, modularity, uh, higher thrust, um, and just an overall better working thruster. So here you can actually see a shot of the thruster firing. And for this and all my other thrusters that I present here that I actually built, um, there's plenty of video and documentation available um, that you can view for these systems. Uh, unfortunately, I stopped development of this thruster because there's a lot of issues with the 3D printed systems um, in terms of compatibility with a high voltage and high vacuum and a lot of arc through issues. Um, however, this has given way to a hybrid system um, so this is combining the GPPT-3 thruster head and the EPPT-1 electronics. Um, so here you can see a couple of different iterations uh, with testing different main capacitors as well as ignition uh, pulse transformers. Um, so this thruster was much more successful than the EPPT-1. Um, here's a shot of it actually firing. So I was able to fire the system over driving the electronics to a rate of 4 hertz, um, which the GPPT-3 um, was operated at uh, one third uh, hertz. So a significant improvement in terms of uh, thrust and output power and still still very low um, power system at maybe a watt and a half, whereas opposed to the GPPT-3 was operating lower at about a half a watt. Um, so this development is still currently going on. I am currently exploring ways to improve thruster reliability and getting the system firing more um, repeatedly and long term. 
so next we have a quite exciting thruster that I've been working on. Um, this is the AIS Illus One. So unlike the prior thrusters, this is an um, ion thruster, whereas the prior thrusters were uh, pulse plasma thrusters. So this is um, an ionic liquid ion source electrospray thruster. Um, so this utilizes room temperature molten salt um, for the fuel. Uh, in this case, EMI BF4. So like the prior thrusters, again, you can see all the control electronics and the thruster with the fuel tank itself all together on the small board. So the system is very compact. Uh, again, 45 by four, 45 millimeters, uh, 16 millimeters deep. Uh, very low mass, a one gram fuel capacity currently. Um, the fuel is EMI BF4. And um, for these types of thrusters, the fuel is held in a porous glass reservoir. So you can see kind of the, um, the thick layer in the center of this diagram. And uh, that is passive a porous glass emitter. In this case, I have seen um, during the most recent testing with the V7 prototype, I achieved a peak thrust of about three micronewtons uh, with a, a operating voltage of about 5.8 kV, giving me about 4,500 to 4,600 seconds of, of ISP. Um, very, very low power system. And one of the um, great things about electrospray is its ability for scaling. Uh, electrospray is one of the few technologies that has very high performance at a very, very small level. And these, even individual emit emitters can be down to microscopic levels, um, which this tries to avoid using by using um, uh, newer developments in illus technology uh, with CNC macroscale emitters. Um, so this thruster has been fired uh, multiple times in vacuum uh, over the course of many iterations. Um, well, here you can see the uh, an example of the porous glass ridge emitter and the 3D printed Ultim housing. Um, so this is before the glass is actually saturated in the fuel. And if you follow my developments, you'll see that I have a, a fueling um, procedure as well as the actual testing procedure for preparing the system. Um, so here you can see the ion beam being emitted from the thruster. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done on this system. There's um, definitely a lot of challenges with lifetime and uh, emission um, stability. However, uh, there's, there's a lot of exciting promise for this system um, in the nanosat world and, and lots of other people exploring these types of thrusters as well. So one of the nice things about electrospray in general, whether it be FEEP, ILLIS, or colloidal, um, is their ability to scale and, and has great modularity. So here we can see kind of an example concept for a CubeSat cluster. So you have four individual pocket cube um, systems mounted onto a central control board um, that would allow you to control each of the thrusters separately and provide more performance for CubeSats. Uh, a single thruster could also be used for a CubeSat, but this allows you to scale up easier and get more performance for larger satellites. Uh, here is kind of the ultimate uh, where, where this system is hopefully going. This is the AIS Illus 2, uh, a little bit higher power than I've been running currently, um, but the goal is to achieve greater than uh, 20 micronewtons of thrust at greater than 3,500 seconds ISP. Um, so still a very small com compact system um, compatible for both CubeSats and pocket cubes. And as opposed to the original emitter, which was a single ridge, which is much easier to machine, I'm aiming for a large array of micro spike, or still CNC machine spike emitters uh, to give me more uh, emission sites and better control of emission characteristics of the thruster. So moving on, I'm getting more into some conceptual designs now for systems that I would like to explore for, for CubeSats and larger satellites at higher power classes. So this is a, pro is a design project that I started um, early in the year. This is the AIS IO series. And this is focused on a modular, low-cost, solid iodine-fueled thruster. Now, if you know um, electric propulsion and conventional thrusters like Hall thrusters, gridded ion thrusters, RF plasma, um, they use uh, some sort of uh, gas, typically xenon. Now, one of the challenges for using conventional gases are that you need storage pressurized storage tanks, you need um, fuel delivery valves, and this can add up a lot of cost and complexity as well as has some issues for secondary payloads for integration with the pressurized system. By using a solid fuel that can be sublimated, this eliminates the uh, requirements for 
um, pressurization. Um, so here you can see two of the thrusters uh, variants, and um, one of the, the the core of the IO series concept is the modular um, ionization chamber and fuel delivery chamber. So at the back, you actually can see a heated fuel chamber where there is a presser plate, there is um, a ceramic heater, and that um, sublimates the iodine fuel, which gets fed directly into an RF um, excitation chamber, and uh, the goal of the system was to have a modular so that it can support really any sort of conventional thruster system, whether it be gridded ion like on the left or RF plasma on the right. And all that's really required is to change the output of the thruster and some connections on the board, which would also be kind of a universal drive board. Now, this is all great on paper, but one of the challenges with iodine is that it is extremely corrosive. It corrodes most materials, both plastics and metals, so it's a really challenge to work with as well as kind of a hazard to work with. So I've been searching for a long time for some sort of low um, low power requirements, low temperature solid sublimation fuel to kind of replace this. And I stumbled across a very uh, potentially exciting and experimental fuel in the electric propulsion, uh, which has led me to my most recent uh, um, thruster series design, which is, uh, during this presentation, this is actually the first time I'm revealing this system. So I am pleased to actually present um, the new AIS Adamant series. So this is an experimental ultra modular low cost electrical propulsion solution to support a wide variety of plasma and ion thrusters. So again, this is taking the principles of the IO series and further refining it for this new fuel type. So we have an ultra modular design, very universal fuel delivery system with a plug and play fuel cartridge um, that's also standalone and and highly compact. No pressurization again because it utilizes an experimental um, low sublimation point fuel uh, with a very simple connection to various thrusters with a simple uh, adapter plate. Um, so again the core of this design is the sublimation fuel tank. So the fuel that I have actually selected is adamantane fuel. Um, which is where the adamant um, comes from in the name. So adamantane is a special type of diamandoid hydrocarbon um, that has uh, similar sublimation properties to iodine. And this is very exciting because it can be, um, provide, it can be delivered at a low power um, directly from solid form without the need of pressurization, but it also doesn't suffer from any of the... Um, issues of corrosion. So now we have a, uh, a relatively less toxic and um, more material compatible fuel. And there has there is very limited research on this. This is a very, very experimental fuel. There's very uh, little literature on it. But from what I've seen in some reports, um, particularly the one from the University of Southampton, is that it actually has almost identical uh, performance properties to other fuels like xenon, krypton, and iodine. Um, it is ruled out by a lot of other studies just because they have access to these more conventional fuels and the plasma formation as well as the ion species are incredibly complex, making analysis and stability extremely difficult. But I think at least at this scale, um, since the fuel is readily available, relatively low cost and safer to work with, um, this uh, allows a lot of exciting potential to open up um, for these propulsion systems. So again, this, um, this is aimed for CubeSats and larger satellites um, from the 10 watt class to over one kilowatt class. So highly scale, um, scalable at hundreds of micronewtons to millinewtons of thrust. Um, and this again is to support any sort of um, conventional gas fed electric propulsion system. So anode layer ion thruster, hall thruster, gridded ion, RF plasma, microjet, Anything that re any electric propulsion that relies on conventional gases that you typically see like xenon um, would be used with this system. So here you can see the, the basic design. There's the outer casing. There's an inner um, housing with a ceramic heater on the bottom and a presser plate, and then a presser plate to compress the fuel, and then um, fuel delivery holes to allow the sublimated fuel to go directly into whatever propulsion system is mounted to the top. Um, so here is actually an example. This is going to be the first um, experimental thruster I work on using this um, adamantane fuel system. So this is an anode layer ion um, thruster, which is similar to the tall hollow thrusters, 
um, except this is more the conventional industry version for an anode layer ion source. So you can see that the thruster head itself is directly mounted to the fuel tank. There is an adapter plate, which would be um, adjusted based on whatever thruster system uh, would be mounted to it. So I also, I'm also working on a, a higher power design, a cylindrical hall thruster uh, for the 50 to 100 watt class for, for CubeSats as well. Um, so again, uh, the fuel is directly sublimated from the tank and is delivered into the thruster um, backside directly. So this will be a very exciting uh, development, uh, getting now more conventional systems. Typically, you know, if you're looking at hall thrusters or graded ion thrusters, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm looking to reduce the cost of this by orders of magnitude and, and um, make these technologies more accessible with a very uh, exciting fuel that uh, will potentially hopefully help eliminate the need for um, pressurization and uh, really explore this new fuel source further and, and uh, provide more data for the field where it's uh, very, very limited currently. Um, so you can uh, follow these efforts and, and collaborate, contribute. Um, my, um, my main channel is Twitter, where I do live testing, where I post things regularly, update designs. There's the Applied Ion Systems website with all the documentation, as well as other platforms that I am on. Um, you can also contribute to this project. Currently, everything is being funded um, through the AIS Patreon, which um, I would not be able to have continued these efforts throughout the year without the amazing support of enthusiasts around the world helping contribute to, to bringing um, electric open source electric propulsion to life. Um, so with that, I want to thank you for listening to my presentation and I look forward to answering questions you might have. Great. Thank you, Michael. I think we clapped that yeah, impressive, impressive. Thanks a lot for sharing with us all this. And actually, this new design looks very, very neat. So uh, why, why did you go from uh, square to actually cylindrical, even though maybe the casing is squared in the end? But uh. um, so, so those were very different designs. The, the original kind of square thruster was the pulse plasma thruster. And that was a way to make it um, simpler to manufacture, make it super, super tiny for, po for pocket cubes. But the new adamantane series, um, like the, 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 the prior IO series, um, was really geared for CubeSats, so I have more room to work with. And at that's in that in that stage, the cylindrical ge geometry for more conventional propulsion uh, lends itself better just for for manufacturing. That's amazing. I got some uh, some questions actually. I I've seen on YouTube, and because you're using Adamante, which is uh, Oh, you mentioned uh, quite a classical fuel or maybe non-academic, or <laughs> I don't know how to mention that. But the uh, question is, where, where do you get that? Where do you get that amount? Um, so so like, uh, like the, like the, um, the electrospray fuel, which is, um, which is an ionic liquid, um, you have to get it through, through chemistry suppliers. So I've, I've gone through um, general chem or, or specialty chemistry suppliers for that. And uh, the end of adamantane is also available from the same suppliers. Um, so I'll be going through those sources again to, to acquire um, the fuel for experimentation. And for the very beginning stages, I'll be using very, very small amounts. Um, that's also kind of the nice thing about electric propulsion is you can use, you know, a gram of fuel or, or, or something and, and really go a long way with it. So um, I have located the source. Um, just I think uh, Sigmund Aldrich is, is one that carries it. Um, so I'll be looking to probably purchase some and, and start developments on the fuel tank, uh, hopefully very soon. Okay, thanks for, for your openness on that question. Um, I, you said you, you've been supported, so you, you, you have a, a Patreon, so uh, do, you, do you plan to make another campaign over there or it's, still, it's always open? Um, yeah, no, I, I, one of the things that I've, I've really decided on with Applied Ion Systems, now that it's kind of an official company, and actually today is the one-year anniversary of Applied Ion Systems being an official um, um, LLC is is really it hasn't changed much from um, from when I was when I was doing this as a hobby because I'm still doing it the same exact way in in the basement <laughs> running the stuff. Nothing has changed except now legally on paper, um, yeah. and everything I'm keeping I'm keeping it still open. I'm everything is open. I'm um, posting everything the same exact way. I I do live streams of testing and 
Um, everyone sees all the successes and failures, and I launched the designs um, just the same. So I want I, I plan on continue keeping everything yeah, yeah, open do. Um, this is cool. through, through my own efforts. And, I'm watching your live streams until I realize they are two hours long, but that, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a lot of times uh, the, the the recent live streams have been um, pretty boring because I've had a lot of failures and and things haven't been going right. But it, it gives people an opportunity to see that you know it's not all it's not oh, all uh, peaches and roses roses all the time. Of course, it's nice. Uh, we have a question from Samuel. Actually, curious, uh, how did you manage to measure to measure micronewtons? So you said that your first rush is that uh, top yeah, of three so, micronewtons. So. so in my um, actually in last year's presentation, I shared um, a very simple way of measuring at this scale is using a little micro pendulum. So I have that directly mounted inside the chamber. It has a little um, one centimeter square capton flap with a very very thin wire and by knowing the mass of the flapper as well as the direction or, or the amount of um, displacement you can actually correlate that to to force and that can also be kind of um, done as well for for some of the larger thrusters as well as the the continuous thrusters um, but for the, some of the things like the ion thrusters you can actually indirectly measure thrust by looking at the beam current so I have another mm -hmm. Tool, a Faraday cup, just a copper cup in there that the beam hits and by collecting the current and by knowing the properties of the fuel and the acceleration voltage, um, you can estimate the, the thrust being exerted from the thruster. Very nice. I hope that answers your question, Samuel. Uh, do not hesitate to, to ask questions, uh, uh, people in the room. Uh, maybe we have more questions on, uh, on the YouTube channel. Just let me check. Uh, yeah, what what do you get that from? That's that was already asked. Um, another question from me, Michael, is um, uh, who who is using your thrusters at the moment? So, do you have users, and do you have plans uh, for the future that are coming up? Yeah, so um, so obviously, uh, Ampsat Spain are using two of my thrusters. Um, I am in um, talks with with another group um, to potentially use it. Um, which I, I can't disclose uh, yet. No, 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 because, please. Uh, but yeah, yeah, and and there's I'm also other, can, talk, right? <laughs> uh, other other talks as well um, for using some of the pulse plasma thrusters as just um, general ground testing sources. So I've kind of for the pulse plasma thruster development, I'm kind of moving towards very low cost open source um, test modules for people to be able to access this stuff better. Um, and I've also over the past year, uh, partnered with uh, Citadel Space Systems in the UK um, to work on bringing um, uh, the electrospray stuff up to um, f uh, for for some of their systems they're working on. So so several several um, channels being explored for the thrusters, and hopefully we'll see some more next year in space. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That's, that's very nice. So um, uh, wish you the best for that, actually, Michael. Uh, I know you're around some on some channels. Uh, where can we find you? Uh, you already have those uh, those links. Uh, are you on the Matrix channels or? Um, you can't be everywhere, right? But yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. So we know where to find you: LinkedIn, Twitter. Michael's always responding, so uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to him. Uh, if you have a mission you want to know, uh, if you can integrate new thrusters, I think you can reach out to Michael too. And uh, I think uh, bit by bit, uh, I see you becoming uh, an industry player somehow at some point because uh, this is, I mean, this is kind of a gap. You know, it's it's hard to know how to thrust a, a cube sat or, or small sat. Uh, actually, you you you've been working with pocket cubes, so it's quite some work. So thanks a lot, Michael. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, and I think we'll break out to uh, to room one. You can stay here. Everybody from room two will will come in, and uh, and we'll we'll uh, we will say hello. So perfect. Thank you, Mantos, for sharing that. So we've seen amazing things. That's very cool. You you can turn on your microphones. You can chat. This is uh, you know it's like a, a small break starting. When everybody comes from room two, we we'll, we will. Uh, we will uh, announce some some decisions. Yeah, well done, everybody. Bravo. Thank you. As well. So, Montos, where where is room two at?